Well, we're here on the third day of uh, APLF 2016. It's April the 1st on Friday. And I'm here with Mike Redwood, who's the spokesperson for Leather Naturally. And uh, we are going to uh, give a resume of how Leather Naturally has progressed since its launch. When did you actually launch? When were you involved in the launch of Leather Naturally, uh, Mike? Well, I became involved a little bit after it had started. Um, or certainly a little bit after it had uh, uh, first been in, envisaged. And I think we're now just entering our fifth year. And, the, and initially, what was the strategy of Leather Naturally? Why was it launched? What was the catalyst behind launching it? Well, the catalyst um, was the fact that uh, there were so many plastics being produced um, that the way in which they were being marketed was confusing the consumer as to whether they were buying a leather material or a plastic material or a textile material and leather was getting lost in the entire uh, discussion uh, of materials and we had to do something about that or leather would have been um, uh, reduced just to a commodity um, and would lose its value mm -hmm. and uh, so it was felt that there was a, a, a big need uh, for the leather industry to stop ducking um, attacks being made on it uh, by environmental groups particularly those pushed by the vegetarian animal rights and vegan yes. side who, who abuse the science um, to attack leather uh, based on totally improper arguments um, and also at the other end uh, to defend leather against uh, really dishonest marketing from plastics that pretend to be leather so that leather was getting squeezed so it's felt the leather industry had ignored these challenges over the last 50 years and just carried on thinking we make a wonderful product it's guaranteed to sell uh, and it was recognised that that was turning leather into a commodity and we had to do something about it. Okay, talking about dishonest marketing, mm. um, um, synthetics, for example, um, gave names such as artificial leather, uh, simil cuero in Spanish and so on and so forth. Why did these synthetics want to use the word leather in order to try and imitate it if, for example, there were certain um, um, NGOs, um, animals right, animal rights groups, etc., trying to, um, to do down leather because of, let's say, cruelty to animals and things, why did they want to imitate leather in turn and then use dishonest marketing to do that? Well, the, the initial thinking came in the middle of last century when there was a feeling that the demand for leather was growing faster than the supply. And that was when we got materials like Corfam and others, whose sole objective mm -hmm. were, was to replace leather and fill the gap mm -hmm. for which there wouldn't be enough hides and skins. Mm -hmm. As it happened with the arrival of trainers made out of textiles, mm -hmm. um, uh, that shortage of leather never actually arose. Mm -hmm. um, but this concept of calling alternative materials something and then leather, synthetic leather, artificial leather, yeah. that became standard. And we in the leather industry were foolish enough to do absolutely nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, here, now we're here in China, uh, there are thousands of companies that make plastic that have leather in their company name. And it's too late or very, very hard to remove it. But leather is naturally a really versatile material. Mm -hmm. uh, the consumer recognize it, recognizes it as something which is beautiful and something which has fabulous performance characteristics. Mm -hmm. So if you can steal that image Yes. by calling a product synthetic leather mm -hmm. or artificial leather yes. or some other substitute leather and so the consumers a little bit uncertain as to whether they're buying leather uh, or not then your product carries the benefit of leather without you having actually had to make it. 
So effectively, you're, you're, you're summing up uh, what was, what was the uh, first uh, part of the Leather Naturally campaign to defend leather as, let's say, noble material in its own right against um, um, synthetics, for example, or petroleum-based synthetics, trying to uh, imitate it. Now that you've got past that stage, um, what is the next stage? Are you going from the defensive on, or on an offensive, or are you going from being reactive to proactive? What's the next step for uh, the Leather Nazi campaign after almost five years? Well, we're not going to stop defending it. Mm -hmm. Indeed, um, probably that defence needs to be stronger now uh, because um, with the low price of oil mm -hmm. and some of the changes we've seen in the last five years, some of the plastics are exceptionally good. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing them being adopted in the footwear sector mm -hmm. where the leather market share is declining. We're seeing them being adopted in parts of automobiles where we have this term uh, that you'll hear a lot called decontenting, where the backs of seats and the sides of seats are made of plastic and just a little bit that you sit on is leather and the, and the car is being marketed as being upholstered in, in leather. So there's some really wicked, dishonest marketing yes, going, that, going, that, going on. Yeah, they even have a, put a leather smell in the car, don't they, sometimes? Yes, they do. And, and, and so a lot of it is what you would call confusion marketing. Yes. Um, so the customer believes they're buying all leather, mm -hmm. but that's not actually what they're getting. Mm -hmm. So we can't back off. And also the vegan groups are pushing quite hard now mm -hmm. that we should give up leather. And we, we've just actually in the last three weeks been fighting an attack that, uh, that says that um, um, so many hundred millions of cows are going to be killed only because of fast fashion just to make leather by a very respected European journalist who's being heavily quoted. So we cannot back off. But what we do recognize is that the leather industry, our mainstream institutions, have now begun to get quite serious in this area. Mm -hmm. And lots of great bodies from the IULTCS through to the European Tanners and the Brazilian Tanners yeah. Association mm -hmm. are really working very well in their individual spheres mm -hmm. to defend, uh, defend leather and provide materials. So we've got a little team who work with the NGOs and reply to all these all these um, uh, articles as, uh, 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 um, uh, more and more um, thoroughly and we're going to try and expand that group but um, we think it's time for us to move forward because um, thank goodness our mainstream in, in, um, institutions have now recognized that is part of their role and they're willing to give it a real go and they're doing it quite quite well and um, so we're saying we will support you we won't back off what we're doing but we're really pleased you're doing doing that we can now move on so after almost five years you've convinced the institutions that leather naturally is on the right track but however isn't it uh, perhaps more important long, longer term to spread the wings of leather naturally with the help of these institutions and to aim to to educate the consumer about the real characteristics and longevity of leather and how it isn't really cruel to animals it is was initially and still is a byproduct of the meat industry. Yes, but you just listen to your own language. We do need to say that, but if we use all that terminology, consumer won't pick it up. Uh -huh. um, so what we think and what we plan to do now is not change our objectives. Mm -hmm. Exactly as you've perfectly described, those are our objectives, to get out and start educating the new consumers. But our messaging has to change. Not our objectives, our messaging. And our messaging has to go away from saying, oh, it's a byproduct, oh, it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. And it has to pick up terms. And one of the terms that's been suggested to us is, for example, nature's perfect wrapper. Uh -huh. Which is, you know, in three words, succinctly explaining what leather is and what leather does and is difficult for plastics or textiles uh, 
to jump into the same space. Yeah, you couldn't really be wrapped in an oil drum, could you, you know? <laughs> well, that, that's right, because if you think of the attacks made on leather, quite falsely, leather gets charged with a huge methane yes. um, cost, yes. which is totally false, however you view looking at it. But a plastic material gets no charge whatsoever for coming from a fossil fuel. No. And it gets no charge whatsoever for the fact that it doesn't last very long, but it, it never ever biodegrades when it gets put to landfill. Whereas a leather article lasts forever, mm -hmm. and when it does go into landfill, it will biodegrade, not immediately, but in a reasonable period of time. We get no credit for any of those things. No, and it's not just landfill as far as plastics are concerned, it's also the Pacific Ocean these days. Yes, these tiny little bits that are killing, yes. the, killing the world when the plastics yes. get mm -hmm. broken down mm -hmm. by salt and, and sun. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so, so looking mm -hmm. forward um, to the uh, rest of 2016, okay. um, we can look forward to, uh, let's say, let's say um, uh, a new approach to actually defining leather, what its characteristics are, and maybe, maybe could I, may I use the word sand bite without sounding corny? Nature's perfect wrapper? Will you be using that or is the a final decision to be made? Well, I really like it. Um, uh, no, a final decision definitely has to be made, but it's going, we are looking for a term very similar to that or that one, which is easier to take to, to the consumer. We haven't got a huge number of members, but our membership is some of the most important and powerful players in, in the leather industry. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe after five years they would say the whole industry has been catalyzed into um, all the institutions, you know, really beginning to push forward and leather naturally could go quiet. But they like the flexibility and the independence of leather naturally so their determination is that we push forward harder and so yes three months on new messaging strategy and then starting to see increased heightened ac ac activity with involvement of many more uh, staff from our various members taking active part in our activities. Well, we look forward to this new initiative and um, hopefully we can be able to have an interview, interview in one year's time or even before when the campaign gets off the ground, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you.